Hello everyone, welcome back to another mini tutorial session here on Ghost Paper. And for this tutorial, guys, I actually want to do a video that is a full top-down tutorial on how to create a seamless pattern in Procreate. So I've made a video about this technique a while ago, but I think it had some like, you know, had some cutaway points. Uh, it was, it had some top-down uh, instructions, but it also had some uh, talking heads. So I really just wanted to make a full tutorial top-down showing everything that needs to be done in order for you to create a texture that's going to be also possible to scale it. So you'll be able to use different scales if you want to use something that's a little bigger, as you see on the screen, or something a little smaller, because this texture will be seamless, meaning that this texture is stylable to however many copies you put it to its sides or top and bottom. So let's just start. So in order to create this stylable texture, we need actually to go through three steps very first one is the setup of this file and for you to set up this file it really depends on the model of your ipad here in this video because we're going to be using the 2018 12.9 inches ipad i'm going to be creating a 3000 by 3000 canvas with 300 dpi and that will allow me to recrop or resize my canvas to something like half a size on each side so at some point here in this lesson we're going to resize our canvas to 4,500 on each side. And that is just because we want to be able to double check that this texture is tileable. So it really depends on the model of your iPad. Just make sure that you don't create from the get-go the biggest size canvas that you can on your iPad, because then you won't be able to resize it down the road. The next step that we're going to be doing is creating the elements. So after the file is all set up, we're going to be creating the elements that will become, that will create this tileable texture. And then the third step is just rearranging these elements around the canvas. So very first thing here, as I've showed you before, we've created this 3000 by 3000 canvas. And now I'm just going to go into my color picker, pick this orange, for example, just any color really. Uh, that, that is a color that you can really see on screen. And by the way, we're going to be using mostly and actually exclusively the two brushes that I always leave in the link of the description of my videos. Those are two free brushes that you can download from my Gumroad page. So we're going to be starting with the mono line here, the one with no pressure. I'm just going to use that and size about 3% size. And we're just going to draw, if I can here, if I can move this canvas, we're just going to draw around the edges of the screen at this point. Basically, we're just going to make sure that we have some sort of a guide, a guideline that runs through the edges of our canvas. So here's one side. And now let's make the second one. And for that, I'm just drawing lines, quick shape, quick shape lines, and then clicking edit shape so that I can align the Bezier points to be exactly at the bottom or you know at the edge of the canvas or of whatever edge I'm drawing. And now if I zoom out, uh, what I'll also do is just duplicate this layer a couple of times, just so it's stronger on screen and you'll be able to see it a little bit better once we go into the next step. So the next step is going to the actions menu in here, the canvas subsection, we're going to tap on crop and resize. Now we don't want to check resample canvas because that is going to resize everything, including the artwork of creating these edges that we, that we just did. So leave this off, but tap on this link here, just so we can input one value and it will mirror to the other one. Because basically now we're still working with the square. That's how tileable textures are created best as square canvases. And we're just going to tap here and we're going to add the 4,500. Now it's added to both sides, but Procreate has a tendency, unfortunately it doesn't really scale or recrops or resizes from the center. And now we just have to do that ourselves. So in fact, uh, if you're at the stage and you forgot to turn on the, the grid lines or the canvas lines, I'm just going to hit cancel and do that right away. So here, still in actions menu canvas, we're just going to turn on the drawing guides. And I'm also going to edit drawing guides, make sure thickness and opacity are very apparent so that the camera can really capture that. And I'm going to hit done and now scale back a bit, go back into the actions menu and go back into where we just were crop and resize. 
Once again, make sure this is set it to off on the resample canvas. Double tap on the link, which will mirror the input values. Now we're going to add the 4500 and zoom back in so we can re, uh, you know, reposition this uh, around the canvas here, around our new canvas. So I'm just going to try to um, get this as best as I can. And then we can also zoom in. So I'm just guiding myself with the faint gray lines that the crop and resize allows you to, to have. And now I think it's just a little bit down, just like so. I wonder even if it's connected to, to this one. Yeah, I think it is. Here we go. So this looks about right. Now we're just going to hit done. And now we have our canvas with our new crop. I'm just going to turn off drawing guide so you can really see what's happening. So now we have the 3000 by 3000, which we just drew around the edges. And we have a canvas that is about 4500 by 4500. This is the setup. Now we can move to the next stage, which is creating the elements. All right, so now for creating the elements, I'm going to be using a palette, a color palette that's pretty much in the green, in the greens and different shades of green. And I'm just going to use this medium kind of light green, go back into my brushes. We will be using the Studio Pen once again. And I'm just going to tap on this layer that we've created, the edges, tap rename and call it grid. And I'm also going to lock it so there will be no problems, no mistakes in drawing onto the grid line, which is certainly what we don't want. I've also now just positioned the grid, the grid layer on top of our new created layer. So that is always uh, visible whenever we're creating our elements. So now once again, making sure we are in the studio pen and we're using this uh, green kind of mid green, mid kind of bright green uh, brush size, I would say about four to 6%. And I'm just going to create, actually, I will go back to drawing guides or maybe I'll leave it off. We're just going to create one circle and I actually want to make this big. So something I, I, I want to mention guys is that when creating these elements, make sure to create them as big as you can because um, we can always scale things down, but scale, scaling them up is where it gets a little harder. So now that we have these two elements, I just want to connect them and uh, don't be worried if right now, you know, as you can see, it almost feels like I'm drawing outside our, our canvas, but we can always reposition these elements later on. I'm just really drawing these elements in separate layers, those, uh, the nature, the foliage elements. So we got this one. Okay. So now I'm just going to use color drop and paint this. And now I'm actually going to do a little bit of warping here just to get to the shape that I actually really want, which I actually want to expand these sides in like a thinner kind of top. something like this. So something like this, I believe that's way better. And now we're just going to use our eraser brush and we will be using the other brush that is provided in the free package. This one is the one with taper and pen pressure. And I'm just going to increase the size quite a bit here and do a test. And what we're going to do is press hard and then let go. And we're just going to create something that kind of looks like this. This is actually pretty good. So once again, hard and let go, press strongly, and then let go. Um, I think here I'm actually going to do one last one here and here. Sometimes it actually works better than other times. Okay. And then finally, we will just 
create an opening like so. Clear this area. Okay, and now just created our first element. So I'm just going to um, actually use freeform magnetics, place this more or less in the center, and this is our first element. So let's now create a new layer, turn this one off. Uh, choose another color. We're going to go a shade darker than the first one and we're going to be creating our second element. So we're still going to be using the mono line for that and I'm actually going to make sure that I'm with the streamline at 100% for this one, especially for this one because this one I don't really want to be worried about the stroke lines that, will be, that I will be creating. It's a little bit more freeform. So we're just going to be doing something like this. Again, don't worry if it leaks a little bit outside the center of the screen. So I want to make sure that this will be filled like so. And now we're just going to drop color onto it. Now we can already kind of move it to the center. And now uh, for the eraser brush, we will continue to actually, uh, let me see, for this one, yeah, we can still use the ink brush, but I'm just going to set a way smaller value because here we actually just want to create an effect like this. Pulling from the center, we're just going to create some, uh, erasing some lines, almost create some texture lines onto this element. Okay, and now we are going to use Studio Pen and bring it uh, up the value quite a bit, so about 30%. And now we're just going to create the semicircles here in the middle and also clear it all out. We're creating this uh, kind of a core at the very center of our element. All right, so now we have our second element. So let's keep moving and make our third and last element. So create a new layer, turn off uh, our last created uh, element and layer. And now we're just going to create with this very lime green color. In terms of brushes, still Studio Pen, kind of a small size here. So about, you know, same as uh, from three to 6% at the most. We're going to make a curve, an arc, and then we're just going to create a few uh, leaves here, very simple shaped leaves, just like so. And one last one at the top. Just redo this one just to get a little bit better. And now we're just going to draw some lines inside these leaves.
last one. Okay. So this element here, I will duplicate it a few times, especially if we're going to scale this down. And now we have all of our three elements, as you can see, in separate layers. So now we can move on to the next stage, which is to organize these elements around the canvas. So now I will group these guys into a new group, and I will call it Originals. Because basically, we're going to be making copies and using them as we place them around the canvas. So it's much easier for me now to basically use the duplicated group and kind of open the group and be able to organize the layers every time that I you know, duplicate the group and do uh, so on and so forth. So it will be more clear once we uh, continue working on this file. So now we're going to select this layer, our first created leaf. Make sure your originals are always turned off so there is no chance even of you selecting or doing anything to them. And we're just gonna use the move tool and also we're going to flip and we're going to place this somewhere like this, for example, as our first one. Okay, uh, I'm actually even going to do something like this. So start placing them outside of the, boundary, uh, the boundaries of the uh, area of our tileable texture so that we can then create the pixels to make it tileable. So this will be the first one now for this flower. I'm also going to scale it down and move it like here. Maybe it'll be even bigger and just like so, like here. And I also actually wanna make this um, under the big leaf. So the big leaf will always be on top, okay? And then our last created element will always be at the bottom, this guy here. So just move this guy just like so. So we got a little bit here. I will move these guys out of the group, the leader group, once again, duplicate originals and continue. So right now we're populating top left and then we're gonna start moving to the bottom as well. So turn on originals. Maybe I'll just do this right away, get all three elements. I think it's moving the group as well. Here we go, get all three elements, move it outside the group, delete the new uh, group, select our top leaf, move it to the very top, rotate it a bit once again, scale it down. This one's gonna be, let's just say like about here. Okay and probably more cut off. Now select our second element, which is this guy. Let me make it smaller. Put it around here. And our last element, I will flip it vertically and horizontally. And maybe it will be somewhere like this. So now that we have this, I'm just going to tap and select everything, make a group, and I will duplicate this group so that we can start testing if the tiling will work. So the duplicated group with these arranged elements, I'm gonna tap on it and flatten it. The other group is just gonna be a backup. I'm gonna turn it off. We're not talking about the originals here. So the originals are still in their own group at the very bottom. I was talking about just what we just created at the top and left section of the frame. The reason why I flattened it is because we're going to use our selection tool, make sure it's set to rectangle, and we're going to first grab the pixels at the very top. We're going to, going to make a selection and make sure that we have a selection pretty much at the, uh, at the edge that we want to, and we're going to copy these pixels and set them at the bottom of the composition. So I'm just gonna make this selection, uh, do a three finger swipe and copy and paste. So now we're going to move these guys to uh, right about the edge of the frame. You can also hold one finger onto the arrow, onto the arrow here, and you can use your other hand to zoom in onto the canvas without scaling this element. So this will allow you to actually position this at the very, very like right place, at the very, you know, the correct pixel so that you can create a tileable texture, just like so. 
So now we've placed the top pixels at the bottom. And as we can see, we're still pretty much clear of everything else, which is good news, meaning that this leaf here, it's not really, you know, going on top of this one in case you don't want to overlap pixels in this way. So that's why we have to start testing. So the top to the bottom is working, which is great news. Now we have to try left side to right side. So same thing, we're gonna go back into our merged layer, make a selection that is a rectangle. We wanna make sure that we have a rectangle that is right on the edge of the frame, that is correct. Now we're going to do three finger swipe, copy and paste, uh, move this to the side first, and now hold the arrow with one hand, zoom in with your other hand, and now move this back a bit, and then forwards a bit, so that you can get the tiling working. So now that we've placed this, now I can see that I still need to do one very, very last, uh, let me see here, which is to put this little part, I have to put this at the bottom as well. And uh, the good news is that once again, everything is working really well here. And then the last step here will just be to fill up the middle section of our tileable texture. So let me just do that. So I'm just going to create a rectangle, copy and paste. I just have to zoom out before I move this uh, to here. And now I'm just going to make sure that this is working well. Here we go. And now I have that little piece there. All right, so now that we are here, we can actually continue working, but I can even merge everything here and just kind of set this part and just continue from here. Just now, we just need to fill in with more elements. Alright, seems now that we have our texture and it's filling correctly all of the edges of the square. So now the very last thing that we need to do is merge all of our texture layer. So everything is in one layer here. We're going to unlock our grid layer. And now with the grid unlocked, I'm just going to color drop on any color really on the grid so that we can tap on it, hit select. Then we're going to go invert and now on the texture layer, tap on the texture layer and select clear. Now, if we turn off grid, here we have our tileable texture because we've deleted all of the external pixel, pixels outside of the boundaries of our 3000 by 3000 canvas. And now we can actually do that as well on the canvas. We have to go back into the actions menu, go into the canvas section and then crop and resize we're going to turn off Resample Canvas as usual, select this option and tap 3000. Now with the 3000 canvas, we can just make sure that we're again repositioning at the very center of the illustration, hit done. And now we can go back into the 3000 by 3000 canvas, knowing that this is a tileable texture. So the very last step now is just go into the actions menu and then hit share and then just tap onto PNG. In my case, I'm gonna do it as a PNG and then just export the image so that you can tile that 
in Photoshop or any other application that you prefer, even Procreate itself. So now that you have your texture, make sure to have some fun with your new seamless pattern and you can create some different color arrangements. You can create some different scales applied to different products. Really, it will be up to you to see where and how you want to apply this texture. So that about does it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, a like would be super appreciated. As well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews, and speed paint videos. And that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen, there's more content for you guys to watch and expand your skills on Procreate. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.